Hello, welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Airfix's brand new tool, 148 scale P51D Mustang. Now let's face it, the Mustang, plenty of options out there. Uh, Tamiya's legendary 148 scale kit. Quite old now, but it's still one of my firm favorites from all times. And a lot of people, when they're coming back into modeling, they say they'd like to do a World War II aircraft. What would you recommend? I always say that particular kit. It's a great kit. It's got lots and lots of potential, goes together an absolute dream, and very, very straightforward. And that's the whole point when you get new people into the actual hobby. And that was really it. That was your sort of go-to kit for many, many years. And then to be honest, Meng, and I'm looking at it over there now, we've actually done a full video build of this one uh, as a one-day build, actually did the glueless version. and I. I thought that was actually a really nice kit. I don't think it's glue version at all. You still need glue to get it to go together, but the principles are there, but it's got a good level of detail right the way through the entire kit, and it goes together with no real problems at all. Now Airfix have jumped on there with their brand new tooling of this particular aircraft, so it'd be interesting to stack those two up against the classic, legendary, still one of my favourite kits of all time, compared to something very new right the way through on this particular kit. So we see beautiful box art on the front. I have to say, that is absolutely gorgeous box art. Uh, down on the sort of digital art that Airfix is doing now and a couple of very striking uh, markings down on there so again not much going on in the box to be honest kit number for this one is A05131 North American Mustang okay and then down on here we got a couple of uh, markings down in here so we've actually got a uh, little Indian uh, second air commando squ uh, group 10th um, air force uh, and this is India 1945. And then we've got Jersey Jake, beautiful aircraft, uh, flown by Captain Donald Strait, uh, the 361st Fighter Squadron, 356 Fighter Group, uh, down in that one in uh, Suffolk in 1945. Okay, now, to be honest with you, I have done this review before, hence it is out of the bag. As you know, normally I do these reviews, I don't see anything into it, but the sound failed. So I've had to do it again. So here we go, round two. Anyway, starting as we did last time, we just get the parts out of the way, down in here, and the box, we've got one little part that came off the sprue, because to be honest, the bag was very, very tight to getting it in and out of the bag. So anyway, down in the instructions, usual thing with their fixes instructions right the way through. If it's in red, it's just to draw your attention to it, okay? And it shows you an alignment part as different things go in. So don't worry too much about those. But as we can see, starting at the top, got the seat, going in there with the actual cockpit area. So we've got the batteries, uh, communications gear and everything else like those being fitted down onto there as well. The seat being fitted in, control stick being gone in there. And then we've actually got the, um, down in the bottom here, the instrument panel. It's a decal, and to be honest though, I would probably dry brush it and do it, but you have got the option down in there as well. So that instrument panel and the rudder assembly drops down in, very straightforward uh, job down into that one. And then you're working on that very large uh, air scoop uh, system that is down underneath the Mustang. So we've got the radiators being fitted down into that and the cooling scoops going down and in. Into the tail wheel, depending if you're gonna be having it open it or close, you're gonna chop this section off of here to make it flush. You've got a separate one for the closed position a little bit later on. Showing a side view just down in here at the bottom, that's the actual uh, undercarriage uh, tail wheel being fitted down into that one and then the side piece coming along. And again, if you are gonna be putting it with the actual gear up and closed up, you can trim that off, okay? On the other side, we've actually got the uh, side panel uh, on the port side so down in there we've got the actual throttle system uh, and the RPM levers things like that and then obviously we've got the trim wheel being fitted in and we've got a couple of placards going down in there showing those ones and then on the other side we've got the electronics uh, side of it so we've got the actual uh, the power the battery and the navigation lights uh, and information we've actually got the canopy close handle uh, and a few other parts down in there as well being fitted on notably it's got a separate tail so we're expecting different versions to be coming along so it is interesting how it does it it's a two-piece tail two halves go together and then obviously it's going to be up in the vertical and it is mentioning about putting them in now as opposed to putting it in uh, together and then sliding it in afterwards those are being fitted in and then it's a mirror on the other side for those parts going in then it's just a case of sandwiching the two halves together. Pretty straightforward once all those are all in there. No engine, but so uh, we weren't expecting one. And then we've actually got this nice uh, uh, top of the engine cover being fitted down on the top there. One piece underwing, opening up the holes either for the paper tanks or the aluminium tanks being fitted down in those. And we've got a wheel bay uh, system as well. Good detail down into both of those. Tops of the wings being fitted down once you've actually got the uh, friend or foe light system being fitted down into there. And then obviously we've got those 50 cal uh, fairings on the front of the wings going in. 
rudders being fitted in, sorry, the actual uh, flax being fitted in, uh, can be uh, put in either open or up or down position. And then we've got 15 degrees of movement down on the ailerons uh, on the outside as well. And then usual thing, we've got the wing section as it is every single Mustang on the planet, the way it clips up underneath that big old air scoop just down there on the inside. Underguard being fitted down in there. And then obviously talking about the actual spinner uh, locator being fitted on, got the exhaust systems going on. And then that front section pops in there just like that. Next up, we've got the all cooler um, scoop being fitted down at the front. Then we've got the radiator, the tail ones being done, obviously depending on which position you want, open or closed, uh, trimming back the little tabs if you want. Tail planes being fitted on there. And then we've got the actual elevators being fitted on, 30 degrees up, 20 degrees down. And on the rudder, you've got 30 side to side. Okay, and then we've actually got the gear. So if you're gonna do it closed up, that's straightforward, just a couple of panels. And then we've actually got the main gear doors being fitted in, and then you've got the gear being fitted in there underneath there, the light, the various things down underneath there, and not forgetting the all important tail wheel at the back. Then you're just into the rockets and the fuel tanks. So if you can do that triple rocket pack, those are gonna be fitted down in there like that. And then you've got the aluminum tanks or the paper tanks being fitted down in there. Pylons with sway braces and then fitting those in. And you've got a little pitot tube being fitted underneath the wing just down in there. Then in case of just the spinner, um, then you've actually got the prop system, various things. And we've obviously got the actual uh, instrument panel combing with the clear part for the windshield being fitted in there with a the gun shite. Then we've actually got the actual uh, uh, clear part at the rear, a couple of bits of framing down in there, and a very cheapy chacky. I don't know if he's one of the actual uh, crew. Uh, Airfix being done in there, a little bit of fun in there, and then canopy open or closed, and then just fitting those in, not forgetting the all important aerials at the back. So if you're going to have it, you can have your blade antenna with the actual hoop antenna. So it's just drawing your attention to those parts just like that. Markings, as we said before, beautiful markings, as you can see with those lightning strikes all over it. And then we've got this absolutely fantastic one down in here for Jersey Jerk with this gorgeous red. Um, and then obviously you're gonna have decals which are gonna make up the spinner uh, for putting the blue. So you're gonna prime everything with the actual red first and then you can actually decal it over it with the blue. So it's pretty straightforward how that one's gonna go right the way through. And then obviously your markings, stencil data, not tons of it, but it's all clearly laid out on the back of the instructions just like that. Okay, decals. So decals, let's face it, Airfix have got it nailed down now. We don't have the old out of registry nightmares. We used to have them many a year ago, but quite frankly, they are very nicely done. Minimal carrier film. We could probably catch it in the light there. You can see there isn't much carrier film. Nice satin decals. So we've actually got the markings and then obviously we've got the lightning bolts on there to be fitted on. And then Jersey Jerk, those hoops, this is for the actual spinner. Hopefully those are gonna go in nicely, get your alignments right. And then obviously we've got the diamond pack and for the actual over the red. And again, we've got markings down in there and walkway areas done in those, couple of kill markings, things like that. Again, really very, very nice. Okay, down into the plastic, unfortunately, is that horrible soft stuff. So recently I've been moaning about it a little bit. I'm not a particular fan of it. I think it's a little bit soft. The glue tends to attack it a little bit more. It can lead to sink marks. And unfortunately, straight off the bat, we do have a little bit of a sink mark just down in here, how well the camera's gonna pick it up. And that's all due to this little, ring locator underneath okay so that is the only trouble with this plastic but generally it's nice to see that we haven't got over the riveted so when you look at the tops of these wings you have got that thing Tamiya actually went the other way and showed all the riveting but the reality is they were puttied smoothed and then painted over the tops of the wings. So you don't get riveting detail, but FX have got obviously some of the locating ones uh, for removing of panels, access panel ones and everything else. So again, really nice job on that one, best of both worlds. The actual main fuselage itself, you can see maybe a little bit heavy on the actual riveting and rescribing, but definitely it's all there. And you can see those access points for the ones around the engine, really nice indeed as you can see right the way through. The fuel tanks, as I say, we've got the paper tanks and the teardrop tanks down on there. We've got a rudder just back there. And then we've actually got the underside of the cockpit, which is in this fantastic system down in here. So those two holes at the front are your fuel gauges. The pilot looks down through his feet to see what's in his tanks, okay, and things like that. So it's all pretty nicely done, very straightforward. Big old sprue with the actual underside of the wing. And we've got these different types of tails that we were talking about before. But as you can see, again, a nice, detailed, nicely engraved underneath there, showing off all that great detail and riveting work down underneath. And then again, we've got this big area down in here for the radiators. Okay, and if we flip over, we have got the internal detail. Unfortunately, we have got some ejector pins. So this is down in the inside of the cockpit for the sides. And then obviously we've got the uh, major main doors 
And again, no ejector pins in those and some very nice detail. We do have an ejector pin each side here for the tail wheel, but they are right up inside. You're never going to see those. The actual tail itself, I don't know, maybe a little bit heavy off when it's like thumb size for the size of the riveting on the back. Maybe just a little bit, but we've got two options down there. I'm not sure which one is actually used in the kit. But again, they just seem to be a little bit heavier if we're honest. Okay, so underneath we can see lots of bits and pieces going down on here, but notably up here we've actually got the uh, bottoms for the wheel wells, nice details, nice framing work down in there. We have got a little couple of tabs, it looks like little pressure points just actually on the prop. It's a shame because there's no sink marks on the prop, but it has definitely got two little dunts on it just there, and we've got the back part down in here of that main well. This plate, straightforward, no problem at all. Control surfaces, as you can see, so we've got flaps top and bottom. Uh, and obviously flat or in the deployed and ailerons. Same with the tailplanes just there, they're very nice indeed. Our pilot figure, who has got a hell of a nose on him, okay, but again, nice rendition, very nice. And the underguard area, maybe a little bit heavier again on the panel lining, but definitely gonna take a wash well and uh, stand out. Okay, smaller parts as we can see just underneath here. Plenty of stuff going down under here and all the rest of it, but looking around it again, we've got the seats, we've got the actual pylons, the tail wheel, the main gear, and then going through we've got various things. Nice little rendition for the guns, for the 50 cals out the front, very nice, got the oil cooler scoop down on there. Different types uh, of little fairings uh, around the front end, more parts of the bombs, control sticks, various um, actuators for the actual gear doors, got the battery at the back here. Couple of different types of stacks down in here for the exhausts, some bombs. There's that instrument panel. Again, I'm thinking dry brush and a little bit of hand detail might be better than the actual uh, decals, to be honest. Nice clean intake for the actual main intake. Rudder pedals, again, lovely little touch down in here because we've actually got the checker pattern for the fabric and with the harnesses molded in as well, and they look very nice. There's your gear, smooth tired or checkered, uh, depending which one you want. Both of them weighted wheels, again, very nice touch. Spinner cap, no problems with that at all. And then we've got a couple of the other areas down in here, the back of the radiator things. Some of the smaller stuff, some of the spray, uh, sway braces, pito tubes, uh, trim wheels, things like that, all the rest of it, radiators, tail wheels. Main gear, uh, side doors, we've got the seat, top of the actual instrument panel, got the hosing down there as well. So that's actually all very nice indeed. No problem with any of those. And again, considering I was concerned about sink marks and things like that, there isn't many on there whatsoever that stand out. Down in here, we've got a little weapons fret. So we've got the triple rocket pods down to go underneath the wings if you're planning on doing that routine with those. Separate sprue, it's probably gonna be the one for this particular kit, okay? Clear parts. I said about it before, but here we go. Again, beautifully done. No problem with these clear parts. It's a difficult, complex shape to try and mold, but actually that's not too bad at all. And then these windshield ones for the actual screen, very nice. The only thing is they're quite softly molded on the edge, so it might be a little bit of a problem trying to mask up to them, knowing where that edge line is. So either get in there with a toothpick, a little bit of a pencil line, just so you know where you're cutting or failing that by a mask set and not having troubles at all. And there we go. Really nice. So yeah, second time I've reviewed that, but actually spotted a few things on the second time round, which is quite a nice touch. But generally, I have to say, yes, you've got your options, Tamiya, Meng, or Airfix, but at Airfix's price, it's gotta be a must, really. So there we go, that is Airfix's brand new tool, 148 scale North American P51D Mustang. Click.